So in this video, we're going to look at a special pre, uh, X variable. It's called the dummy variables. So the reason we're considering the dummy variable is because when we do the multiple regression model, sometimes you want to include in the categorical data to your um, uh, regression model. So for instance, some group might study the, what is going to affect airline tickets price. And one group might think, oh, I think maybe it depends on the airline company. So maybe the Delta will be more expensive than United, etc. So if you think about if you want to include in that variable called the brand, the, the airline company as your as your predictor, so you have to know how to uh, coding those um, English word to the model, right? Because when you collect the data, the information you get is United, uh, Delta, American Airlines, etc. So there are not numbers. In order to be able to use regression model to analyze the impact of the brand of the airline to the airline tickets, you have to be able to translate those English word to the uh, to the numbers. So how can how should we translate? So that is the method we're going to learn called the dummy variable. So the dummy variable is used to represent in your category data that are your categorical X variables, categorical X variables. Keep in mind when you work on your project, <clears throat> your Y variable has to be quantitative data, but your categorical, uh, but your X variable can be either quantitative or categorical data. Actually, for this project, I do require you to have one uh, down, uh, one category data, one category data. So I have the one recommendation. If your project only have about 50 observations, <clears throat> so 50 observations, uh, so your uh, your your category data should no more than three categories, no more than three categories. Uh, so for instance, uh, if you talk about eye colors, you will see yellow, blue, uh, sorry, brown, green, others. So then become three categories, three categories. So if the dummy variable, uh, so the category data should uh, no more than three categories, three categories. <clears throat> so let's see how we're gonna use this dummy variable and also what what it how we define a dummy variable. So in many situations, we must work with the categorical independent variable, which is our X variable, such as gender, male, female, others, and a method of payment, cash, check, credit card, etc. So if they are your X variables, how are you going to code it? So we're actually going to rely on my dummy variable. So for instance, if we want to talk about gender, if we only consider two genders, I know we have others. I'm sorry for uh, not including here, but just think about if we have others, but let's say just we only consider male or female as the example we see in here. So the x uh, must uh, represent the gender when x2 equal to 0 indicate a male, x3 equal to 1 indicate a, a female. So that x2 is called a dummy variable, and sometimes they call it indi uh, indica indicator variable. <clears throat> So uh, you should understand why it's called indicator variable because x2 equal to 1 is indicating it's a female, right? So indicating it's a female. But why we call it dummy variable? So the reason we call this variable as dummy variable because the dummy variable can only be equal to 0 or 1. So it's kind of dumb, right? So that's why we call it dummy variable. So dummy variable can only equal to 0 and a 1. So now you're going to ask me, so how about... The, categor uh, the category data you have, categorical variable you have, have many categories. So for instance, like uh, this case, the payment, cash, check, credit card. So you have three different categories, but now the dummy variable can only equal to zero or one. How can I use zero and one to model cash three different categories? So the answer is you can increase in the number of the dummy variable. So that's why we have this conclusion. If a categorical variable has K levels, and the k minus one dummy variable will are required, and each dummy variable being coded as zero or one. So, for instance, if we look at a class standing, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. So you have four levels for this class standing called categorical variable. So if that's the case, we only need a three dummy variables. So three dummy variables. So each variable will indicate in one of the categories. Let's say x1 is indicator for soft freshman, x2 is indicator for sophomore, and x3 is the indicator for junior. And some students are going to ask, how about senior? How about senior? And so uh, if you watch the computer skill 5 later, and you will notice that the, uh, the senior is my base category. So my base category. And um, well, obviously, I'm going to show you more examples to let you understand why we only need a k minus one dummy variable instead of k. <clears throat> so, um, 
Uh, later, when we look at example, I will explain that uh, how should we interpret partial coefficient for the dummy variable. It will be very, very different from our traditional partial coefficient. So pay attention on that example. And so I will, as we just learned what is the dummy variable, that's why I want to show you more examples. So like I said, if the category, uh, the categorical variable only have two levels or two categories, and so let's say male, female, and so that's how we define, I only need one dummy variable, right? Two categories k equal to 2, that's why I need one dummy variable. So x1 equal to 1 is indicating the female, x1 equal to 0 indicating male. So this dummy variable also called a female indicator because only it's female it will equal to 1, otherwise it will be 0. And then also if we go to the real world clock observation, you see a female, so the value for x1 will be 1, and it's a male, the value will be 0. So we actually call my uh, last the level I highlighted M is my base level. The reason is later we're going to show you more example. So when all the dummy variable equal to zero, that level will be my base level. Base level. And also if you look at uh, the dummy variable, we only have one dummy variable indicating female. So if you are thinking, um, uh, the, if you look at here, we have two categories, so you're thinking we should have two variables. Actually, no, because when x1 equal to 0, that's indicating my male. So that's why the male actually is my base level. <clears throat> so look at more complicated situation, bachelor, master, and PhD. So here, k equal to 3, right? Three levels. So now, how many dummy variables do we need? You're right, k minus 1 equal to 2. So now I'm creating this two dummy variable. So x1 is the master indicator variable. So x1 equal to 1, master degree. x1 equal to 0, otherwise. And x2 will be my PhD indicator. So when x2 equal to 1 is PhD and 0 otherwise. So some students can ask, how about my bachelor degree? So why would we only define um, two level, indicate two level, master, PhD? The reason is because um, the dummy variable works for multiple level categories is because the combination of the dummy variable showing us which level we are in. So let's see how it works. So if we go to the real world to collect the data, so we notice that uh, master, PhD. So when the student is holding the master degree based on the definition of my dummy variable, right? X1 equal to 1 x2 will equal to 0 because that's master degree. So therefore, 1, 0 together telling us the observation is a master. And so for the PhD, look, PhD, if the student is a PhD, x1 going to be equal to 0 because it's not master, but x2 will equal to 1 because x2 is indicating PhD. So that's why the combination of x1, x2, 0, 1 is telling me this level is this observation is holding the PhD. And so for the bachelor, so obviously when we look at bachelor, it is for x1 it's not master. So bachelor x1 equal to zero. For bachelor x2 also equal to zero. That's why the zero zero uh, together, uh, the x1, x2 together, zero zero indicating the bachelor. So now you understand that uh, why we don't need a uh, uh, k level need a k dummy variable because we always have one level that uh, all the dummy variable equal to zero. So all the dummy variable equal to zero uh, is the level we didn't indicate it using the dummy variable. And also this level we give them a name. So we give this level a name. It's called a based category or based level. So why I want to define here, it is because Later, when we look at interpreting the partial coefficient for the uh, for the dummy variable, you have to identify the base level, base category before you can interpret it correctly. So keep in mind how to identify your base level. So now let's look at example together. So let's look at the case together. And so this is a different example. So before we're using the SPAR member example, but in that data set, we don't have any uh, categorical data. So that's why we're looking at the new example. So an efficiency expert has studied 12 employees who perform similar assembly tasks, recording the productivity unit per hour, number of year of experience, 
and which one of the three popular sampling methods the, um, the individual has chosen to use uh, in performing the task. Given the data showing on the next slides, determine the linear regression equation for estimating productivity based on the other variables. So I did include in the data Excel data set on your D2L, you can download it. <coughs> So before we look at the data set reading this case, you actually notice that we have uh, three variables in this case. So the first is the productivity, and then we have the number of years working for the firm. And the third is the assembly method. So obviously, if you look at what we, this person trying to do, he trying to predict the productivity using the year uh, using the worker's experience and uh, also using the assembly method to see uh, which uh, if they are significantly affecting productivity. So obviously the productivity productivity will be your y variable, the number of years experience will be your x variable, and your assembly method will be another x variable. So the number of years will be the quantitative data. Um, so it's a uh, and in uh, yeah, it will be the integers. But for the assembly method, uh, assembly method A, B, C, D, F, G, etc. So they're gonna become a category data. So this example, the key here is this assembly method. So let's look at the data together. So in order to fit in these uh, slides, so I kind of uh, changing the four column data to eight. The reason is starting from the seventh worker, I starting a new row, new column. So if you look at Excel file, so you only see four column because uh, this side, so this side is supposed to be under um, the first sections. So you can see, here we have my y variable, my x1. But for the method, we don't name it x2 yet because it's a category data, right? We have a, b, and c. So for this category data variable, we have how many levels? Yes, we have three levels. Therefore, we only need the two dummy variables, two dummy variable. So let's see how we define the dummy variable. So when you work on your homework, I always define your dummy variable. Make sure you read the question carefully, how I define dummy variable. Also, when you work on your exam, I also define the dummy variable for you. However, when you work on your project, you are just use the same idea to define your own dummy variable. Just keep in mind, the goal, the key here is, dummy variable can only take two values, zero, one. Second, uh, is if you have k level, you only need the k minus one dummy variable. So this is usually confuse the student. But if you remember these two dummy variables, and so the x two is the method a indicator. So therefore, x two equal to one if method a is used, and uh, x three is the indicator for method b. Therefore, if method b is used, and uh, uh, the x three equal to one and the zero otherwise. So after we define our uh, dummy variables, and we can go back to translate our uh, method, uh, the English word, to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the dummy variables value. So we have x1 here, so we need x2 and x3, right? x2 and x3. x2 and x3. So first, uh, the first worker productivity is 75, year experience is 7, and he's using method A. So now we're going to translate method A to the value of x2 and x3. So based on our definition, if you forgot, let's go back and look at it. So this guy is using method A. What's the value for x2? 1, right? x3 is not method B, so that's why it's going to be 0. So the first worker method A will be 1, 0. Okay, so the second worker... He's using his productivity is 88, air experience 10 years, method C is used. So what's the value for X2, X3 for the second worker? So X2 has to be zero, right? It's not method A. X3 also has to be zero because the method, uh, the method B is not used for the second worker. So therefore it's zero, zero. So before I move on to the next worker, think about which level is my base level? You're right, method C, because all the dumb, when all the dummy variable equal to zero, that's gonna become a base level. So method C is my base level, and also when we define the dummy variable, that's the only level we didn't define, right? So that is my base level. So now the next worker using method B. So what's the value for x2, x3? 
So math x2, since he's using method b, so x2 has to equal to 0, but x3 will equal to 1. So let's go back, 0 and 1. So now you know if you see method A it will be 1, 0. If you see method C it will be 0, 0. If you see method B it will be 0, 1. So now you know how to define it. So let's look at our first six um, observations. So we have another six as well. So that's how we translate the method to the value of the dummy variable. So after you got the value for y, x1, x2, x3, so make sure you understand that uh, all the x variable has to next to each other. That's why after I translate to this, you don't see method A, B, C to separate my x variables. If your x variables are separated, you won't be able to run the result to get your final result. So after we run the regression, so this is the answer we got. So this is the answer we got because here is the B1, uh, B0, B1, B2, B3. So that is the answer. <clears throat> so uh, before we end, uh, before we move on the practice question, there, there's one more thing we have to learn related to the dummy variable. So that is how to interpret the partial coefficient for the dummy variable, such as negative 7.36 or positive 9.73. So some students say, oh, I think it will be the same because this means if x2 increased by one unit, y will decrease by 7.36, keep other variable as constant. So the answer is wrong. So think about x2. When x2 increased by one unit, um, it doesn't make any sense, right, for anybody who's going to look at this variable because x2 is a dummy variable indicating whether they are using method A or not. So when x2 increases one unit, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean one more worker using the method A. Totally wrong. So now how are we going to interpret the partial coefficient ahead of the dummy variable? So the main idea you have to understand is when we look at the dummy variable, we are comparing different categories for that categorical variable. So for instance here, for this method, we have method A, B, and C. So we are comparing methods. So remember, x2 is the indicator for method A. So you are comparing method A with some, some, of, some other method. And so which method you are comparing with? So the answer is base level. So base category. So that's why at the beginning of this video, I keep emphasizing about the base level because it's going to affect your interpretation. So let's look at our interpretation formula, how to interpret the partial coefficient of the dummy variable. So let's see, beta k is the dummy variable. Uh, is the dummy variable's partial coefficient. Uh, I need to change here. So let's say xk is a dummy variable to indicate the category k. So which means if uh, the category covariable equal to k, so xk will equal to 1, otherwise equal to 0. And so the base category is t. So I had to use a general form, so that's why I pick up the English letters. So the base category is t. And so the, the, uh, the, the category got indicated by xk is k. And so the beta k will become the partial coefficient of the xk. So that's why how should we interpret the beta k? So this is how, comparing with the category T. So that is my base level, right? If uh, if it is category K, so basically this category is indicated by XK, right? If it is a category K, the Y variable will increase beta K unit given the rest of the variable not change. So uh, we still need to like la la the last phrase given the rest variable not change because we are analyzing the multiple regression model. So this phrase still be has to be kept there, very important. But here you can see the difference between the regular partial coefficient and the partial coefficient for the dummy variable. So for the regular partial coefficient for the quantitative data, we look at the x1 increased by one unit. However, if it's the partial coefficient for the dummy variable, we are actually comparing two categories. So that's why comparing with the category T, which is my base category, if it is a category K, the Y variable will be increased by uh, beta K unit. So let's see how we implement this uh, interpretation formula to the this example. So the example is learn, I just estimated. So the working efficiency, method A indicators, partial coefficient, method B's indicators, partial coefficient. So let's see how we interpret this negative 7.3 and a positive 9.73. So as xk 
Uh, so let's see. For negative 7.36, So comparing comparing the method C again, look at the uh, interpretation formula. Compare with my base level. So method C is my base level. So comparing the method C, if method A is used, remember B two is the partial coefficient for x two, and x two is the indicator for method A. So if method A is used. The productivity, so that is my y variable, right? The productivity would decrease by 7.36 unit per hour. So since it's an active value, that's why it's a decrease, given the year of experience not change. So now we look at the B3. So B3 is the partial coefficient for the uh, the indicator in, in, uh, for the x3, which is the indicator for method B, right? So compare with the base level method C. If method B is used, the productivity will increase by 9.73 unit per hour, given the year of experience is not changed. So this is the in uh, this is the uh, the how to interpret our partial coefficient. So the next 